Hi, it's Chris from Epic Systems here and I've put this video together to explain some of our system basics and some handy hints to get you started on using the system. And my aim is to provide you with the knowledge that you need in order to carry out some of the key functions such as the items on your screen now. So we'd like to cover logging in and out, the dashboard and what it does, how to customise the dashboard and refresh it, changing of passwords, the menu layout, how user permissions can be set and how that might affect what you see on the system, and navigating and switching screens and also how to use the report filters. And there'll also be a few extra bits along the way. Our system is browser based. So once you've navigated to the system using the unique URL that we assign to your company, you'll be presented with a login page that looks a little like what's on your screen now. And you use that screen to log into the system using a unique user name and password that is assigned to yourself. So I will log in using my training login. And then this loads the dashboard page. Now once logged in, you'll be presented with a page that looks a little like what you can see on your screen now. This is what we call our dashboard. Now on the dashboard, you may have your own company logo situated up here on the top left. And down here in the bottom toolbar, there could also be, depending on how you have your system set up, there could also be some client logos as well. Now each of the items on this dashboard is in its own white box and we call these dashboard widgets. And the dashboard widgets can be tailor-made to show or not show depending on your job role and also depending on what permissions you might have in the system. Now you may notice within each of the dashboard widgets there is a green arrow forming a little circle. And what that does, if you press on that, it will refresh that panel. So you can go around and refresh individual dashboard widgets individually if you wish and having the same effect will also if you press on the home button this here will refresh all dashboard widgets together. Now the dashboard itself can be customized in terms of its layout on a user by user basis so we can bring in or take out dashboard widgets individually so that people can have just the data they want to see on their screen when they log in and every time they look at their dashboard. Now you do this by navigating to the personalize button which is found at the bottom here of the dashboard and clicking personalize will allow you to then make changes to what is shown and whereabouts it is shown on the dashboard and then any changes you make to this screen will then be reflected when you click on the home button to refresh it. Now I'm not going to cover how you do that and what each of them do on this particular video there'll be a, another video on that. Now when we've set your system up, we'll have given you a system generated password for your logon. If you want to change that, you can do, and you do that from the drop down menu up here and choose change password. And then like many other applications, you'll be asked to provide the current password and then a new one and then confirm the new one before pressing continue. And then the next time you log out and back into the system, the password you need will be the one you've just changed it to here. You may have noticed on the top right hand side here, just around where the menu was, there's a little red X. That there will close the current window that you are in. Likewise, pressing the home button would close that for you because it would refresh the dashboard. Across a lot of our customers systems, we do try and go for a standard menu layout with very similar looking menu items. However, everything can be customized and captioned to suit however you want your system to look. But we do try and go for a find menu where you will find items that will let you search for things. So finding a job, a project, a client or a purchase order or a sales invoice, those will all run reports to help you find something. We aim for our menus to be as obvious as possible as to what's housed within them. So like with the create button, we have under there the simple job, a project and a purchase order. All three of those options will allow you to create something within the system. Likewise under the operative management menu, this is where you'd expect to find things that relate to your operatives or your engineers. So it could be the operative diary screen, 
where to create absence bookings and also to run the timesheet reports. Now the menu items and indeed the items that are within the menus can be customised depending on individual user requirements and also restricted based upon user permissions. So for example, the applications and certificates menu here, this quite clearly relates to the application and uh, payments process. Maybe that your operational staff perhaps don't need access to that, so you would just simply remove that menu from them. And similarly, the invoice export, this would be all to do with getting your financial transactions out of the system and into your accounts package. Again, you would probably want to restrict that to one or two key users, uh, especially those in finance. And also again, the setup menu, certain users could go ahead and create things within the system and modify the system setup. Again, you might not want all your staff to do that. You may want to restrict that just to the select few. To modify user permissions and indeed the menu items that they see, this is normally something that Epix would do for you uh, based upon a request from somebody uh, in authority at your organisation. So we would receive the request to make a change and then we would just simply go ahead and carry out that change for you. So for example, if I wanted to give my user here the reports menu so that they could run some key performance indicator reports, then I would need to request that via say my line manager who would then request that of Epix and Epix would go ahead and make that change. Pressing the home button will refresh our system and as you can see now I have the reports menu available to me and under there some KPI reports that I requested. One of the things we show on our initial training sessions is how to switch between frames within the system using the drop down menu up here on the top right. So to demonstrate that, I'll open a few windows and show you how that is. So if we have find job, maybe create job, and perhaps the operative diary open. If I now go over to our drop down menu over here, you see that this has expanded in the list now. So we can now see the window for find a job, manual job entry, and operative diary. So if I click on to find job, that takes me into the find a job screen. And if I then switch over to the operative diary, that goes to there. Closing each individual one then removes it from the list. And then also pressing the home button on the dashboard will refresh the entire system and close all open frames as demonstrated there. The final thing that I'd like to show you on our introductory video today is how to manipulate report filters and how to get the best out of searching for data within the system. We'll begin by using the find job report. Now the, the screen that you're looking at now contains a variety of search fields. The white boxes are where you can use text containing. So basically any part of a string. So, so for example, in this one here, the property contact containing, if you thought it might be a John, then you could type simply the word John and it will look for any matches with that word in it. The blue fields with the question mark next to them. These are live searches. So as you type something, it will look for a match in the system. And if it finds one, it'll present to you all available matches for the words you're typing. And you can then select that to use that search criteria. Also, we have date pickers where we can identify a date range and we can change the month and the year as appropriate, both from date from and date to. For this example then I will use the customer already filled in here and I'd like to show all live jobs for that customer. So I would just simply press search and that will then run that report and the system will go away and find all results matching the filters I selected and will display them in this format. Now you can see at the top of the table here I'm circling the number of results found it's found 261 in the find job report. To briefly explain the layout of the page you're looking at, this is a very standard view of what most of our reports will look like. So the top left hand side is where you'll find the title of the report that you've just run. And directly below those in the bold blue text here 
These are the report filters that you had the opportunity to use when you first ran the report, but we can also change these now on this screen to help you manipulate your data. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Below that, it will show you what you're currently filtering the results by. And this is set at the moment to the two values that I chose on the previous screen. So the customer and the live jobs. And below that, we have the number of results that our findings have produced, which is the customer and the live jobs. There are 261 results in the system at the moment. And of course, below that is the table view of the report results themselves. So this is the 261 results displayed in tabular format. Now on the far right hand side of the results, so if we scroll over here, there are some options available to us above the results here. The first is the pin button and by pressing pin, that will then pin this report into our reports menu the next time we refresh our system by hitting the home button. So if you found a report that you use frequently and is very useful to you in your job role, pinning it will add it to your reports menu and just yours and it will remain there until you unpin it. So to quickly recap that process, if you want to save this report for future use within your reports menu, you'd simply hit pin, then press the home button to refresh your system and refresh your menus and then what you'll find is that that particular report will then be shown under the reports menu. I'm just going to unpin that now for the moment. The personalised button allows you to set the columns that you want displaying on this report and also allows you to maybe even set permanent filters for the results that you want to get out of this report. So if I click on that, I should be able to show you what I mean. So if I scroll down here, we can see we've got two tables. We've got the edit report fields and the edit report filters. So we'll begin on the left hand side, editing the report fields by ticking to not show something, that will remove that column from the report on the previous page. So let's say we wanted to remove cost code because we don't use it, we could untick that and then click save. And when what we should find now is when this results finish loading, that the field for cost code has disappeared. And if we click back on to personalize again, add that back in again and press save. Once the results have loaded we can now see the cost code field has reappeared. And to explain the right hand column if we click back on personalize this is where we can edit the report filters. So it could well be that your job role is primarily to look after a specific customer and you don't really want to see jobs and results for any of anybody else other than a particular customer, in which case you might then have a customer filter set to always show the same results for the same customer every time when you run this. So editing a filter and then pressing save will do the same thing, it will automatically apply that filter every time you run that report until such time as you go back in and repersonalize it and take this filter out, which I'm going to do now for the purposes of our demo. And I shall just resave, taking us back to the results page here. The last two options available to us over here on the right hand side are print and export. Now print will create a PDF file printout view of the results table here and the export button will load up a CSV file for you containing the results in uh, different columns as you might expect. As you can see that's downloaded here. You can then open that into your preferred spreadsheet program and you can then edit the results and create nice reports to send to clients if you need to. From this screen we can also sort and manipulate the filters to help you drill down into your data more should it be required. So I'd like to quickly show you how the sort feature works. So all of the column headings on this report, if you hover over them and click on the actual column heading, it will then apply a sort to your results on that column. So for example, if we sort on date of the received date of a job, we click on here, you see a little green arrow appears 
and that's now sorting in descending order. If we click it again, that will switch our results around. This green arrow is pointing upwards and that will show us our most recent jobs first. So that's sorting in date order. But we can also, if we wish, sort on postcode. Or we could also sort on customer name. Or we could sort on a ticket number in ascending order if we wished. So you can apply a sort to these headings by clicking on the heading itself and then clicking it again to perform the opposite sort, so either ascending or descending order. One of the things we can also do on this screen is to apply different filters. Now the filters we have currently applied are the customer and the live jobs and we did that using the find job report but if we wanted to change our results and drill down a little more then that's perfectly possible by manipulating the filters from here. So as I said currently we have customer and live jobs. If I wanted to say remove that customer but show us all live jobs in the system regardless of customer then I would click on there turning the green tick into a red cross and then I would go over here to the right hand side and press the update filters button. That will now remove the customer filter and show us all live jobs in the system. If I wanted to add in the customer again, I can click on the filter here and then I can search within that field for the customer again. And then I can press update filters and that will reapply that filter to that report. Notice again the results are back to 261. If I wanted to then maybe apply a date filter to say show me all of the jobs received in April then I could go to the received filter and I could then use the date picker to go back to April from the 1st of April until the end of April and then I would update my filters again and that will apply that and as we can see here there was one result shown so it's taken us straight into the job sheet for that result so if I close that job sheet we can see here the report that that produced customer received date range and show all live jobs and the one result here. Now if I wanted to take the live jobs filter off to show all jobs that were received in April I could do that and that has expanded the results to two in our demo system and the blue text in the results is a link to the job number and clicking on those will let you go into the job sheet and then look up more information should you need it. So that process of adding in filters and manipulating the data like that, I've done that on Find Job, but it's the same process throughout the entire system, regardless of which report you're in. So any of the reports that exist here, or even the operative diary screen, they all contain filters like this, where you can manipulate them in the way you've just seen. So once you've mastered that technique, you've pretty much mastered how to navigate our system. Well, I hope you found that short tutorial useful. If you do have any other questions at all, or you'd like to see any of those things in more detail, then don't hesitate to get in touch and we'd be happy to guide you through it.